teams now being presented to the dignitaries here at Wembley this afternoon. Leicester have already been introduced. Kevin Moore and the Blackburn captain introducing his team. Now, Kenny Dalglish has already sprung quite a surprise, Don, uh, in his own inimitable fashion by letting Tony Parks, Blackburn's long-serving manager, player, coach, uh, you name it, he's done it at Ewood Park. He allowed Tony to, to lead the team out this afternoon, which was a nice touch, don't you think? Yeah, a tremendous touch. Tony's been there a long time, a very loyal servant to Blackburn Rovers, and it's a big day. Let's hope it goes the right way now. That, that's the main thing, really. I wonder how much of it was Kenny maybe feeling that too much attention would be focused on him and he wanted to put the attention on the team, it's their day. Yeah, it could well be that. Uh, it could well be, of course, knowing Kenny, he didn't want to wear a suit. That's Tony. Yeah, Tony, <laughs> fact, he just about felt this too work for the suit on. Now, George Courtney, the referee, Don, it's his last well, game. Um, I'm astounded by this. I, I cannot believe the football league have done it because he had the game when we played Crystal Palace uh, three years ago. And very controversial circumstances and now I think they've put a lot of pressure on perhaps not I mean referees say they're not un under any pressure but I think there's been a lot of pressure put on him today time will tell with that one but I I'm amazed at the league making that decision what we say about referees uh, good referees you don't notice them throughout the course of 90 minutes um, you always tend to notice Mr Courtney well especially being his last game but uh, what, I mean, a referee's decision yesterday has, has turned the game in many ways so who knows what can happen this afternoon indeed we'll get into that at half time by the way I've got one or two questions for you on that stop ball game, I must say. Uh, people are speculating about potential match winners. Scott Sellers is a name that has been mentioned. Um, you've got a sort of contrary view to that, well, haven't you? Well, Scott uh, bottled it a little bit uh, on the, the last playoff game we went, or the second one, when we played at Crystal Palace. He just didn't play. And uh, perhaps the last time we were here at Wembley, when we played the full Members' Cup, we didn't quite get it right. So that may be the case today. Who knows? It's a, it's a day where it's going to be the men that will be there at the end of the day. Let's just pay our respects to the national anthem for a moment, Don. Blackburn Rovers supporters, Don, a very pretty one there in the middle, but they are outnumbered quite heavily by the Leicester fans this afternoon, true to say? Yes, yes, but there's one supporter should be here today, unfortunately, because he died. Bill Fox, Bill Fox is responsible for this today. Jack Walker's got a lot of praise for what he's done. Bill Fox brought Jack Walker to Blackburn. That should never be forgotten. He also brought Kenny Dalglish to Blackburn Rovers as well. And that's all been, the, the newspapers have all mulled that over. Bill Fox is the, the gentleman who's responsible for that team being out there today. The former president and much respected uh, president of the, uh, of the Football League. Don, for the time being, thanks very much indeed. The teams have uh, broken, they're kicking in, so let's join our commentary team this afternoon for the teams. It's Lenny Lawrence, who we've already heard from, and Clive Tilsley, good afternoon to you, Clive. Thank you, Elton. It is a very good afternoon for watching football, absolutely stifling down at pitch level. This is the Blackman Rovers team that Kenny Dalglish has selected. He's never named the same lineup for more than two games in a row, and he's made a change again today. It's in midfield where Chris Price is preferred to Lee Richardson on the right, maybe to keep a second pair of eyes on Leicester danger man Tommy Wright. Roy Wegerly is back in favour, replacing Duncan Shearer on the bench. Leicester City reverted to a five-man defence for the playoff semi with Cambridge and Brian Little has stuck by that policy today. No place then for the former Manchester City man David Oldfield in the starting lineup. Wright will attack from the left flank. Ian Ormeroyd and Kevin Russell are the men who lead the attack. Speedy is the chant that's been echoing round Wembley since the gates open at one o'clock. David Speedy rapidly becoming a Blackburn folk hero. His hat-trick at Plymouth carried them into the playoffs. If David Speedy is the Blackburn fans' favourite, then the former Wrexham striker Kevin Russell is the darling of the Leicester Hordes. He got their winner at Ewood Park last month as a substitute, but has now won a place in the first 11 for the playoff games. Kevin Moran's goal was the key difference between Blackburn and Derby in their semi. Captain today on the pitch where he was sent off during Manchester United's FA Cup final win over Everton in 1985. Tommy Wright was the man who did more than anybody to carry Leicester to Wembley, devastating against Cambridge in the semis. He's experienced the high tension of playoff football in his days with Oldham Athletic. 
George Courtney in charge today. He'll be 51 next month. Time to retire. It's his 14th Wembley today. He had charge of the League Cup final between Manchester United and Nottingham Forest last month. It's the last call for the Premier League. One more ticket remaining for the gravy train. Ten months of sweat and toil, and it all comes down to this. Blackburn Rovers in their change strip of all yellow this afternoon. And Colin Hendry quickly involved. Alongside me, Lenny Lawrence, who in mid-February, when Blackburn was seven points clear at the top of the table, said the rest of us are playing now for one promotion place. I think both of these sides will feel they should be up by now. Yeah, there was a little bit of kidology there, but I honestly believed it at the time. Um, however, I'm sure that if Blackburn get there via the game today, they'll be just as happy. These players really haven't known whether they've been coming or going through the last few weeks of the season. They've each touched success, each flirted with failure, but they're all still marooned in no man's land. But we'll know their fate soon enough. Carl Muggleton is the Leicester City goalkeeper. Long towards Steve Walsh, who's forward. Turned away by Moran. One back by Thompson. Grayson for James. Gary Mills pushing forward from full-back, just unable to get to the ball. I must say, the condition of the pitch is absolutely first-class. It's the fourth game in six days at Wembley, but it's the weather conditions that are far from ideal for football. Leicester City are off for an end-of-season break in Ibiza on Wednesday. They may get a chance to cool down out there. is not the uh, Leicester City first choice keeper Kevin Crawl is injured so Brian Little has had to make a change for the last three games of the season and bring 23 year old Muggleton into his side Steve Walsh looking inevitably for the six feet four and a half inch frame of Ian Ormanroy but the smallest man on the field Alan Wright was the man who turned it back to the keeper. <laughs> David Speedy. Seen off by Walsh. Wright running straight into Atkins. This is Thompson. Run off it by Newell. Now Scott Sellers. Speedy ahead of him. Tried to thread it through, but... Leicester City had an awful lot of men between Scott Sellers and David Speedy. Blackburn have settled into their tight 4-4-2 formation to start. Leicester have had the most uh, potent attack so far with Ormond Roy the target of their long balls from the back. Ormond Roy the target again, came off Hendry, Russell trying to get in there. Hendry was strong enough, way by May. This is Mills. Toss back in towards Tommy Wright, trying to get in behind David May. Popped in towards Ormond Roy, and Bobby Mims makes the play. Really important when you've got a tall centre forward against you for the goalkeeper to take his fair share of the responsibility. That'll do uh, his confidence a power of good Bobby Mims. He's come for his first cross and caught it cleanly. And uh, Ormond Roy's took a minor knock in the process. He's on his feet. Which is more than can be said for David Speedy. Thompson's challenge. This is Russell. made a break down the centre, this is Gary Mills, Sellers in attendance, Atkins with the challenge, it's come for right, now Kevin Russell, two waiting inside the box, goal kick. Blackburn have been fairly cautious from the start, uh, they've been field four right on top of their back four, and Leicester have made most of the running so far, and have started the live now. Atmosphere, but a very different kind of game. There really is nowhere for the losers to go this afternoon. Mike Whitlow managed to keep the ball in, but unable to link up with White. David May is the Blackburn right back again today. He's a centre back by Trey, but he slotted in well in that position during the playoffs.
interesting. I thought Blackburn would set the tempo of the game and, and do a lot through Cowans, but they're content to sit back and Leicester have made most of the running so far. They've pushed their two full-backs in with their three-man centre-half uh, system and are picking up a lot of the loose balls and about most of the attacks. Been challenged by Wright on Russell. This is Chris Price, David Speedy. Price going on. Showed too much of it though to Steve Walsh. in a row but in fairness they've always lost to a team that finished above them in the final standings which doesn't leave you too much room for complaints and Leicester of course finished fourth in the second division three points ahead of Blackburn Gordon Cowens David Speedy Alan Wright Sellers offering to take over Cowens Price a little bit of space opening up for Price and then disappearing as quickly, but he was fouled by Tommy Wright. That's the Blackburn have an opportunity here, 10 yards outside the penalty area. That's the first evidence of Blackburn's passing game. Two or three passes which finished up with Price going past the defender and getting fouled and being brought down for the free kick. Cowan's involved there for the first time as he will be involved in this free kick. Both Moran and Hendry are forward. Sellers and Atkins are lining themselves up. Mark Atkins will have the first run at it, and he bounced awkwardly in front of Muggleton, and he just had to fend it off. Skidded a little bit, Mark Atkins' free kick. Muggleton looked a little nervous. Not a great strike, but pitched just in front of him, the goalkeeper, and it was a little bit awkward, and he's pushed it away for a corner. Blackburn are a threat at these corners. It'll be interesting to see how Leicester deal with it. May, Hendry and Moran are all in there. It's deep, though, for Mike Newell. This is Kevin Moran. Turned away as far as Steve Thompson, who successfully dug it out for Gary Mills to clear. Thompson. A little bit of space now for Mike Whitlow on the left-hand side. Cowan's trying to hold him up, and doing so successfully winning the throw. You can't put a value on experience, and that's what Kenny Dalglish bought when he paid Aston Villa £250,000 for Gordon Cowens. This is Alan Wright, Dalglish's first signing. In towards Newell, he came off Walshow, it will be a corner. Interesting move that, the way Leicester are playing with one left winger and two central strikers, they've got a problem if Alan Wright, the Blackburn left back, gets forward, which he did then, far enough to be able to get a good cross into Newell which has led to a corner so Black, uh, Leicester have got a problem there unless they get one of the strikers across quickly he won't need a second invitation to get forward either right he loves to raid and support Scott Sellers Cowens with the corner swung in towards Moore and touched away by James it'll run for a Blackburn throw Mike Newell to Scott Sellers. Russell's come across to marshal him. Sellers a little bit isolated. Managed to squeeze it across and it was a teaser, but it bent behind and away for a goal kick. But he's an audacious individual, Scott Sellers. Don Mackay was saying before the game there's a little bit of a question mark over his big match temperament. I don't know about that, but I think he's older and more mature now and the, uh, the heartbreaks he's had in the past at Blackburn, I'm sure will give him strength today. And I think him and Wright will be a, a, a crucial factor down with their play down the left-hand side. One by Ormond Roy. Price is back there. Hendry clear. Walsh underneath it. Newell beat him to it in the air, but Colin Hill was there. It's fallen for Whitlow and offside against Wright. Premier League in three successive promotion seasons. That's the target for Brian Little today. Two championship years with Darlington immediately behind him. Now in his first year with Leicester, a shot at the top division. Ten minutes gone. 
and inevitably in these conditions a rather cagey opening. David May. Asked a lot of speed, he knew trying to cut off Walsh's route back to his keeper. <laughs> Cowens. Way by James. This is Price. Cowens again. Beautifully delivered from May. Made space for May that he didn't realise he had there. James is header. Only for Mark Atkins. Well blocked by Walsh. Almost came back for Atkins, but it's tidied up by Simon Grayson. A, a good long deep cross there from Andy May, which found Mike Newell on the last defender. A good knock down to Atkins and a unlucky strike there. It's a good move from Blackburn. The first time they found one of their strikers right with an early pass. in pursuit but Steve Walsh who is a former teammate of Mike Newell's both at Wigan Athletic and at Leicester they actually uh, played together on this ground for Wigan Athletic in the Freight Rover Trophy final back in 1985 still good friends but in direct opposition today <laughs> Newell actually got a goal that day he'd settle for one more this afternoon it would be a little bit more important I fancy Oh, and James has slipped, and Speedy was alive to the possibility. Just couldn't prize it away, though, from Tony James. It's a little bit lucky there, Tony James. If Speedy had latched onto that, he could have been in trouble. Warren's header. Right pass Thompson, this is Mills. Grayson. Cleared by Hill. It's a useful ball for Kevin Russell, and he's got goal side of Alan Wright momentarily. Wright very quick in the recovery, but Russell's run himself a corner. Good run there from Kevin Russell, he got his body across Alan Wright at the crucial time, and a little bit of luck with a ricochet, but he's got Leicester a corner. He is only 25 years of age, Kevin Russell. I know he looks a lot older, but he moves like a young man, as you saw then. You're certainly not going to mistake him for anybody else on the pitch. Ormond draws height at the near post is going to be a key factor here, I think. It's Whitlow's corner. It's longer towards Walsh and it brushed off Steve Walsh. It's run though for Kevin Russell. Now for Simon Grayson. Last man for Leicester is Gary Mills. Tossed back in towards James, flicked on in the general direction of Ormond Roy. But Mims in charge. Got a lot of heading power at uh, set plays of Leicester. They've got James, who's good in the air, Walsh, who's very aggressive, and Ormond Droid, and one or two others who are not bad either, so that's going to be a problem for Blackburn. Mike Newell. Not quite sure that's what he intended to do, but it was very well executed, and he's run himself a free kick. Certainly bamboozled Steve Walsh. This is Sellers, accelerating away from Thompson. Never frightened to have a crack, Scott Sellers. A great early ball up from Andy May to Newell for that, uh, before that free kick, although he was a little bit fortunate with a turn as he miscontrolled it, which led to the free kick. They're finding Speedy and Newell a little bit better now, and uh, that will be a key part of their play, I'm sure. Leicester Sellers Martin. trying his luck from long range. Always rising over Muggleton's crossbar. Atkins just got a foot on the ball. Warren finds right. Sellers. Broke the challenge of Mills. He looks confident enough this afternoon, Scott Sellers. Just took a one too many there. But he'll have a license to take men on inside the Leicester City half of the field. You can be sure of that. Kenny Dalgleish, a great appreciator of skill, and Sellers has got bags of it. Price. 
Steve Thompson. Won by Atkins. Only for Walsh. Now Whitlow. Leicester City have a problem at the moment. They have Tommy Wright down injured. This is Kevin Russell. Whitlow again. Wright's received a blow to the head. You can see him stretched out on the turf. Clearly in some discomfort, and usually when it is a blow to the head, the referee is quick to stop the game. And George Courtney has done that now. He really couldn't let that go on any longer. It's hard to understand really why he didn't, uh, he didn't stop it a little bit early. It was obvious there was a blow to the head there. At least he stopped it now. We can see Wright jumping with Colin Hendry. I think he got a, an elbow on the back of the head, but there was nothing malicious about it. You've heard all about the team that Jack built, and there's the man himself, Jack Walker, who's made all this possible for Blackburn Rovers. But he's not a Middlesbrough fan, really, Lenny. I think he's been a Blackburn fan all his life, and... Uh... Obviously, it would be great for him if uh, the support he's given to the football club is rewarded today. But we'll see. It doesn't always work like that. Tommy Wright back in the land of the living will restart with a drop ball. Blackburn have possession, and Gary Mills very sportingly concedes possession to them. I think that's where the politeness will end. The stakes couldn't be higher today. In pure financial terms, they couldn't be higher, but the chance to play at the highest level is so important to every player. Gordon Cowan's actually took a drop down into the second division in the hope of returning with a stronger team. Interesting move that. Sellers rolled in off the line to the inside left spot. A great dive and a ball over the top for Null. Nearly got him in. Here's Gary Mills getting forward, as he'll have the license to do. We often talk about a five man defence, but really it can be quite an attacking ploy if the Leicester City fullbacks are able to push on almost as supplementary wingers. Which is what they're trying to do at the moment. With Gary Mills starting life as a winger, it comes uh, second nature to him. Low on the head this time from David Speedy. He's had worse. Going back to that Scott Sellers, the last Blackburn attack, you know, when Scott Sellers rolls in off the line there, it's difficult for the Leicester right back to know whether to pick him up or not, and he's getting into no man's land there, which is why he was able to hit that ball unchallenged. May, Atkins has made a break from midfield. He's full of running, Mark Atkins. He's got a tremendous engine. Followed all the way by Hill, and Hill has emerged with the throw-in. Good run there by Mark Atkins, he does that very, very well, just his control let him down a little bit. And a great long ball again from David May. Blackman Rovers just starting to assert themselves a little bit more now. Headed by May, this is Newell. Trying to turn it into the path of Atkins. No way out initially for Grayson. Found an escape hatch. Alan Wright in with a crashing challenge. It'll be a goal kick. He's missed out on a chance to play for the England under 21s in their tournament in Toulon because of uh, Blackburn's extended season, but his time will come. Yeah, he's one of the best attacking fullbacks in the league at the moment. Uh, I think he was in the PFA team, representative team, and uh, you know he's, a, he's very good at getting forward. He's a great cross for the ball. He was here with Blackpool last year, of course, for the playoffs, and it all ended in tears. And he was uh, a little bit of disquiet when he found that Blackburn Rovers were in the same dressing room as Blackpool were in last season. Wembley gets to you like that. Blackburn getting into their passing game nicely now. They spread the play around a lot. Hill read that one okay. Russell making a burst down the centre of the field, right across to cover. Moran ran across Russell. No free kick. 
Sellers looking for Newell. There's Away Sellers. by Walsh. There's Sellers again picking it up deep. Unchallenged again. He's leaving Mills in a difficult situation whether to push in on him and leave a big gap behind or leave him to have the ball to feet. And if you do that, he can start pinging those crossfield balls to Speedy and Newell as he did there. Mike Newell. Atkins making a run from midfield again. Well spotted by Colin Hill. Turned away by Tony James. A little bit tight for Hill from right. Whitlow. Blackburn keeping the man in possession under pressure. Mills. And this one seized upon by Price. May. Speedy. Colin Hill. Cut out by Cowens that time, but Hill was man enough to win it back. And Thompson now has encouraged Mills to come forward. Over Ormond Roy, right straining to get there, won't quite make it. Blackburn, after a very slow start, have uh, got their passing game going now. The one thing they haven't been able to do is get their midfield players closer to Speedy and Null. Most of the balls up have been from 30 or 40 yards away. Some have been kept and some of them haven't. They can get their midfield players closer to Speedy and Null and link up. They could cause Leicester a lot of problems. Good header by Newell. Sellers is seeing an awful lot of the ball. Speedy's made a run down the centre. Sellers just chose the wrong time to release it. Speedy had gone and had to check, and then Newell wasn't really ready for the through ball that he played. He's come inside off the line, Sellers, and nobody's picking him up. That's three or four times in the last few minutes now. He's had a free run with the ball or the ability to play a pass without any challenge. Atkins. Newell will got to it again. Hill falling, but getting his head to the ball. Steve Thompson, Kevin Russell, a little bit short that for Grayson and Atkins was quickly in and Sellers looking for the early ball. He's tried to play early there, it was a miss hit ball but at least he showed good vision to see, uh, to see the pass he was trying to play. Uh, he's cute enough all right, and there's quite a football brain ticking inside the head of Scott Sellers. And if he's got options and he sees as much of the ball as he is doing, he'll pick somebody out sooner or later. We're midway through the first half, it's still goalless. But if Leicester City started slightly the better, Blackburn Rovers certainly have the initiative at the moment. Alan Evans doesn't agree with me. Right. Sellers. Cowens, Speedy, nice shot passing, right had gone on but Mills spotted him, Russell under pressure from Speedy, well won by David Speedy for Alan Wright, and on goes Speedy again, body check by Russell, he's got a free kick, free kick in a dangerous position there from Leicester's point of view, they gave the ball away, caught in possession, and most of the action is taking place down this left side of the pitch at the moment where Leicester are one short. Just leaving him on his way, didn't he? But David Speedy is one of those great British sporting personalities. He's uh, an Ian Botham or a Harvey Smith, if you like. Half the country hates him, half the country loves him, but there's no halfway measures with David Speedy. Whether you like him or whether you hate him, he's a tremendous competitor and a genuine first division player. And it's no coincidence that when himself or a Newell were out of the Blackburn team, that was the time they struggled, but since they've come back in as a pair, then uh, Blackburn's fortunes have looked up, and those two are a genuine first division pairing, and I'm sure Speedy will recover now and continue to play an active part in this game. And even if he doesn't, they have a £1.1 million substitute, Roy Wegerly. But it will take more than a, a bump and a bang to get Speedy out of this one. Now Leicester need to be on their toes here, because Cowles is going to deliver this exactly where they want it. 25 minutes gone, Gordon Cowens with a free kick, and after the big build-up, it was a bit disappointed. To say the least. Leicester employing a zonal defence at that free kick, as they have at corners, which is interesting if Blackburn get people attacking balls from deep positions. Right. Great switch ball. 
Chris Price on the end of it. Mike Newell on to Price again. He's clipped a little bit long for Speedy. Chris Price puts his hands to his head, realises what a good crossing position that was and how little he really made of it. Great cross field ball from uh, Alan Wright there. You know, as I say, most of the attacks are stemming from this left hand side. And Chris Price should really have done a little bit better at the end of that. He'll be a bit disappointed with that. But there's a quality about some of Blackburn Rovers football which certainly belongs in the big league. They've mixed up their style at times this season and played it long when they've had to, but Kenny Dalglish loves a passing team. I wonder what uh, Don Mackay's uh, feelings are about the opening 26 minutes, and particularly the contribution that Scott Sellers has made, Don. Yeah, well, Clive, he started off really well. I mean, uh, I was always worried about his whole involvement in the situation because sometimes in the past the occasions got to him, but he's done really very well with it, he's done really outstanding. And uh, his contribution now, because he's got a bit of room to work in, has been first class. The Blackburn Marovers have been unable to profit from the possession and space that Sellers has been allowed so far. We're 26 minutes into the playoff final. And it's still Blackburn in the yellow, nil. Leicester City in the blue, nil. Blackburn have been staying at the same hotel used by Liverpool prior to the FA Cup final a fortnight ago. And the very hotel they stayed at for the European Cup final here in 1978 when a certain Kenneth Matheson Dalglish scored the winning goal. Superstition? Oh, it's just a very nice hotel. first to it, he seemed to be fouled there by Thompson, Russell was almost able to benefit, he charged down Wright's clearance, this is Thompson again, Tommy Wright trying to turn, away by Alan Wright, James with the header, Thompson just left it to bounce in front of him and Mark Atkins was in and this is David Speedy, first touch let him down, Hill through towards Wright, battling away with his namesake Alan Wright and the free kick has gone Leicester City's way. And certainly Alan Wright dragged Tommy Wright down eventually, but for my money, Wright was the first aggressor. That was a good test of speed there, good race, six of one, half a dozen of another there. Uh, looks as if it could go either way, but it's a dangerous free kick, a dangerous position for a free kick. They've got a big aerial threat, Leicester. Walsh is aggressive in the air, James is dangerous, Ormond Droid is six foot five. So if it's, this will be an in-swinger, I'm sure. He's taken a very bold position, Bobby Mims, in the Blackburn goal. Thompson with a free kick. Ormond Roy stretching to get there, but he was taking a ride on the back of Kevin Moran. The ball actually was floated into the six-yard box there, and Bobby Mims stayed at home. He, he started in a very bold position on the six-yard line and decided to retreat as the ball was in the air. It's a pity there was a foul there, otherwise you couldn't really have seen Blackburn getting it away clearly. He's retreated there. He's got up early and got on uh, Hendry's shoulders as Ormond Roy there. Would have thought it in Ormond Roy would need a, a leg up of any kind. His head's in the clouds as it is. Here's Alan Wright. Speedy offside. That's one advantage of uh, playing with three central defenders with the two full backs pushed in. It's easy to catch people offside uh, for runs like that, especially when the ball's coming 30 or 40 yards. That's the one area that Blackburn haven't been able to get quite right yet. Their long balls from the back haven't find, found Speedy and Newell as often as you may want. Free kick which Colin Hill will take for Leicester. In towards Ormond Roy, got a touch on. Hendry had a little bit more time than he realised. Grayson in well, so too though Alan Wright for Blackburn Rovers. Scott Sellers, Mike Newell, nice reverse, Price couldn't quite take it in his stride, but he'll keep it in. David May, not quite the ball that Atkins was hoping for or expecting, and Whitlow's able to get it away. Tommy Wright, only for Gordon Cowens. There's a method and a measure about Blackburn Rovers, which Leicester City can't match at the moment. Cowens quite measure that pass correctly but they've got it back with David May Mike Newell run off it though by Thompson keen enough to try and win it back it's 
inspiration that emerges. We've had half an hour, it's still goalless. Tommy Wright, Ormond Roy in wrestling support. Blackburn have got five back. Wright in towards Ormond Roy, but it's Bobby Mims's. That's the first time that Tommy Wright's had a one against one against uh, David May, the Blackburn right back. Finished up with a nice little cross, but the attacker couldn't quite get there in time. Good clearance by Mims. Away by Walsh, though. One back by Atkins. Mills bidding Sellers the ball. Gordon Cowns, though. Scott Sellers. Price has made a late run into the box. Shepherded all the way back to his goalkeeper by Mike Whitlow. Interesting what's happened here. Scott Sellers has gone off the line inside. Cowns has just dropped off again in front of the back four. So, effectively, Blackburn have got three against two in midfield. And that's why... Cowens and Sellers in particular seem to have so much space. Russell Fuller has had to come out to cover Alan Wright, which has made it difficult for them to get forward as a unit, other than through long balls. And it's running that Kevin Russell can't do in the Leicester City cause later in the game when he's having to chase the Blackburn fullback. Ormond Wright with a header, turned away by May. It's fallen for Grayson. This is Ian Ormond Wright, Steve Thompson, Mike Whitlow. Kevin Russell trying to draw wide, wasn't the best of passes, neither was that from May, nor that from Walsh. At the moment, Leicester's main method of attack is the long ball to Ormond Droid, hoping to pick up the bits, but they're a side that's suited better really to counter-attacking, so although Blackburn have got the, uh, the tempo of the game to suit them at the moment, it doesn't mean to say that Leicester are out of it. Right on towards Sellers, it's a little bit too strong for him. Both teams will believe deep down that they really should be sitting in Lenny Lawrence's seat now, enjoying the sunshine. Blackburn led the table for three months, of course, and led by seven points in mid-February. But Leicester had their fate in their own hands, entering the final week of the season. They lost their last two league games and missed automatic promotion by three points. Close, but not close enough. As Brian Little knows only too well. Hendry's header, it's fallen for Wright. Mills, Wright, coming looking for the ball now, Wright. Thompson's cross, in towards Ormond Roy, turned away by David May. Simon Grace, Steve Walsh. Whitlow is forward, but Chris Price playing in midfield as uh, a seasoned right back, and he'll carry out his duties inside his own half very capably, you can be sure of that. Although Leicester have played a lot of long balls, Colin Hendry at the heart of Blackburn's defence has done a very good job in the air and he's won the lion's share of the, uh, the headed challenges. Speedy with a little flick for Mike Newell. Atkins is arriving from midfield, so too Scott Sellers. Atkins is the furthest man forward now. Sellers in towards Atkins, James just got his head to the ball. Hill emerges with it. They've got it back though, David May. Gordon Cowens. A little bit long that uh, for Speedy, but I know that Brian Little is more than a little concerned that his team missed their big chances during the regular season. They had a chance to come here for the Zenith final, but fell to Forest at the last hurdle. They had a chance to avoid Wembley, of course, by winning those last two league games with Charlton and Newcastle. He's a very frank and thorough manager, and he's not frightened to admit that he's not altogether sure how his team will respond to this challenge today. Now Leicester had a tremendous season. Brian's turned them around completely. They only just avoided relegation last year, and to get to where they have today is a marvellous achievement for everybody connected with that football club. What the problem he faces is, of course, a sense of anticlimax after just missing out, but people should remember that... Uh, Leicester won five out of the last seven games and I think nine out of the last 11. Now, if they'd finished up winning all seven of the last seven in the regular season, then it would have been a truly phenomenal performance. And it came as no surprise and a great relief to me that they didn't manage to do so. Colin Hendry seems to have survived that clash with Ormond Roy. A few neck stretches. Maybe a few questions just to make sure he knows where he is and what the day is and how important the match is. But he's all right. It's a lovely day to enjoy yourself, if the match wasn't quite so important. Again, the 
ball sportingly played back. This time into Leicester City possession. Ormond Royd and Henry together again, this time Henry winning out. Alan Wright, on for Mike Newell. James couldn't reach it, this is Newell. Chance for him to run at Hill and James, he's turned them. Mike Newell hit Walsh in the face, he knew nothing about it. Newell so unlucky, great run and a great strike. And Steve Walsh almost unwittingly came to Leicester City's rescue. Vintage Blackburn there, a great early ball from Alan Wright. Found Newell in space and he took it on very well. And he's a bit unlucky with the final shot, but it hit Walsh. Gary Mills though for Leicester City. He just plucked that one out of the air somehow. He waved his leg at it, hopefully, and it stuck. And suddenly he had it under his control and had a great shooting chance. That's typical Leicester City there, defending at one end, and as I said, they're best suited to counter-attack. They've got a lot of pace in the team. And they've gone from one end to the other. And Mills had a good strike on his left foot, just wide of the goal. But as I said, going back to the Blackburn attack, a great early ball from Alan Wright. Newell's at his best here running with the ball. Good turn. Strikes it on the target, Walsh gets himself in the way. I think he did know what he was doing there. He might be regretting it now. I think the keeper would have had it covered, but uh, obviously he wasn't taking any chances. But Mike Newell's at his very best when he's running at defenders in, those, in that situation. Well, Walsh certainly felt the shot. He's had to have some treatment from Brian Little's physiotherapist, Mark Heaton. He's only 38, uh, Brian Little. It seems to be a young man's game, this management. Kenny's only 41. And Lenny's not much older. I'm 44, but I feel 64. You'd have felt 84 if you hadn't gone over, I can tell if you. If I was here today, I'd feel 84. <laughs> Steve Thompson, who's been through it all, of course, with Bolton three times. Three times in the playoffs with Bolton and three times beaten. There's a few hard luck stories out there. Waiting for a happy ending. Kevin Russell, who was beaten with Wrexham in the playoffs once upon a time. Ian Ormond Roy, who's lost a couple. Thompson. Whitlow. Wright's gone on the overlap. And Wright has won himself a corner off David May. Good move from left to there, switched the play well. Got a two against two down the other side and finished up with a cross. Got themselves a corner. Good counter-attack again, they're coming back into the game a little bit now, Leicester. Seven minutes of the first half remaining, and it's just bubbling up. The opportunities, the openings, are starting to happen. Steve Thompson with the corner. In towards James Digwell and Ormond Roy with a little snap header, just turn it over the crossbar. There's that uh, heading ability, James has attacked the ball well and knocked it down, and Ormond Roy was a little bit unlucky, although he was moving very quickly. Uh, not to deflect it towards the goal. It's going to be a problem for that Blackburn. Good driven ball in. I think it's James who attacks it, gets it, it is, knocks it down. Ormond Rogers can't keep it down. Kevin Russell. Still nil nil. Thompson. Out to Whitlow. He's got right available to his left. This is Tommy Wright. Russell's made a run to the box, Ormond Roy's trying to get there, but Bobby Mims had the correct position. Good positioning there from Mims, he took it nice and comfortably. Here they come again down the left. Newell, Cowan's trying to switch it quickly out towards David Speedy, lovely idea. Yeah. They put two or three passes together down one side of the pitch and look for that long diagonal ball to get either Speedy or Newell one-on-one -on -one with the last defender. They've just missed on two or three occasions. Thompson. Mike Whitlow. Tommy Wright. He's starting to see a bit more of the ball out on the left-hand side now, on the Leicester left. Steve Thompson again. Gary Mills. Wright's made a run right across the pitch. And Mills trying to switch it towards Ormond Wright. David May, Norman Roy stretched out one of the longest legs in football and won it back. And he's trying to get round Colin Hedry here. Norman Roy still going. 
bundled to the ground. Muted penalty appeals off the pitch, not on it. Gordon Cowens. Great tight control, Cowens. A nice pass too for Atkins. They play their way to trouble well there, Blackburn. Speedy. And here they come again down the left-hand side with Scott Sellers. Alan Wright trying to get up at his shoulder. Three to his right. Alan Wright arriving. Great cross. Muggleton struggling. Got to it the second time of asking. David Speedy came crashing in at the far post. But Carl Muggleton was brave enough and just about good enough. A great attack from Blackburn, the best move of the game so far. Finished up with a terrific cross from Alan Wright. Good goalkeeper, just got a hand to it. And I think Speedy's injured himself in the collision, but that was a sweeping move from one end of the pitch to the other. And once again, the finish came from this left-hand side where uh, Sellers and Scott, were, uh, Sellers and Wright were two against one against one of the Leicester centre-backs. And if they don't do anything else, something about that, they're going to have a few problems. Carl Muggleton threw the ball very quickly out of play so that David Speedy could receive attention. He actually had a spell on loan to Liverpool in uh, 1990 when Kenny Dalglish was the manager of Muggleton. Liverpool and Dalglish took an interest in him there. Roy Wegerley and Lee Richardson and the Blackburn substitutes today. But he's a goalkeeper who, despite his age, has actually been around a while. He's had a number of loan spells. But any goalkeeper who lines up in a Leicester City team sheet, a Muggleton's Leicester born, will know all about the back from Chilton Heritage. They've all got a hard act to follow. Here comes the cross again. Great little ball in from Sellers. A lovely little clip in from Alan Wright. Just got his hand to it, and I think uh, Speedy just caught his shoulder. Brian Little brought his players to see both the fourth and third division playoff games here. Certainly giving them a taste for the dramas of these showdown matches. A penalty decider on Saturday, a last minute winner yesterday. Two games that were exhausting just to sit and watch. Blackburn stayed out at their hotel in the country and let the others do the worrying. Tommy Wright. Kevin Russell. Leicester City actually set off for Wembley yesterday and left Carl Muggleton behind at the hotel. They forgot all about him, he had to get a taxi here. It won't be the first or last time that's happened either. That's footballers for you. Two minutes of this first half remaining. Still Blackburn Rovers nil, Leicester City nil. Alan Wright, Sellers trying to get in behind Mills and creating some space for Wright. Now he'll look for Sellers to take over. Cowens. Atkins has made a run into the box and that's who Cowens is looking for. Hill got his head to it. Mike Newell, strong play but just bumped off it by Mills, run back by Atkins. Tidied up by Grayson. Right on to Whitlow. Russell and Norman Wright ahead of him. Grayson trying to get there too. Right available now outside of him. Steve Thompson with some space. Gary Mills. They're queuing up beyond the far post and it's hung in towards Ormond Roy. He's won it too and he was leading on the shoulders of Colin Hendry. Hendry got himself in just the right marking position there, so Ormond Roy had to foul him. If he hadn't been marking properly, that might have been a, uh, a clear knockdown with one or two Leicester players looking to get in on the uh, bits and pieces. Last minute of this first half. It's been something of a sparring session. The two clearest sh shooting chances coming within a minute of each other. Newell for Blackburn and then Mills for Leicester. And here's Newell setting up Speedy for another. Sellers is in the middle. Speedy has got past Walsh, has he? Penalty. George Courtney had no hesitation. David Speedy in the last minute of the first half has won a penalty for Blackburn Rovers. I don't, I don't think there was any doubt about it. It was a 
great turn from Speedy. He's going to the byline here. He checks back through his legs. Walsh grabs him by the arm. I don't think there can be any doubt about it. Unlucky on Leicester, so close to half time, but uh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. It'll be Mike Newell who scored a really vital penalty at Tranmere to lick Blackburn's season last month. Mike Newell against Carl Muggleton. They're on the way! <laughs> Applause from the manager. Delight for the players. Mike Newell, maybe the most important penalty of this long football season, gives Blackburn the advantage in first half stoppage time. Turn from injury has done so much to raise Blackburn spirits in the final month of the season, has raised them as high as they've been at any stage in the season, with a goal on the stroke of half time. Blackburn Rovers first one million pound signing. Money very well spent.
Welcome back. Blackman Rovers possibly 45 minutes away from the Premier League. They lead Leicester in this uh, playoff final by a goal to nil. A Mike Newell penalty. Mike Newell about to start the second half as we rejoin Laurie, Lenny Lawrence and Clive Tilsley. Thank you, Elton. There's never a dull moment with Blackburn Rovers, is there? If they make it to promotion, they'll have come by the pretty route, the long and winding road, but it's always been their way. But they won't care too much if they reach their ultimate destiny. 45 more minutes. Some say it's been a work -a day second division this time, yet Sunderland reached the FA Cup final. Portsmouth very nearly joined them. Let his own team, Middlesbrough, ruffle some first division feathers along their cup runs. The lesser themselves have beaten Everton, Palace and Notts County this season and drawn with both Arsenal and Forest. And whoever wins, all three promoted clubs will be clubs geared to Premier football. It's such an exciting prospect. David May. Mike Newell tried to make a run and ran straight into Colin Hill. It's an interesting situation now as to how long uh, Brian Little perseveres with three centre-backs if uh, they're going to uh, remain a goal behind. They haven't really penetrated to any great effect Leicester in this half, in the first half, although they started well. Blackburn can sit back and play their passing game now, not having to chase the game. Russell the target. Away though by Alan Wright. Only as far as Colin Hill. Steve Thompson for Leicester. Tommy Wright. Foul from behind by May. Good advantage played by George Courtney. Hill in towards Russell. Mims had to come for it. Good catch from Bobby Mims again. Position is absolutely right. Here goes Mike Newell now. It's a lonely beat. But he's got away from James, and now he's got support from Atkins. Couldn't quite reach him, Steve Walsh was in the way for Leicester. Oh, the piercing run into the Leicester box, though, by Mark Atkins. Another dangerous run from Mike Newell there. He turned James well and got away from him. The final ball wasn't quite up to it, but uh, once again, Blackburn looking dangerous in the break. Now, the interesting thing now is that uh, Blackburn have got the goal up. There's only four, they're only 45 minutes away from Premier League football and they need to keep their nerve and keep playing. This is the uh, incident with Tommy Wright. It was a foul by May, but the ball bounced to a Leicester man, so George Courtney will wave play on. Good decision. But Wright is in need of uh, some treatment. He was in the Leeds United team as a 17-year-old Tommy Wright. He's always had potential. He was nearly promoted with Leeds. He was in the playoffs with Oldham, when they actually lost to a last-minute Leeds United goal in 87. And he's been very much the inspiration behind Leicester's efforts this season. David Oldfield and Phil G, both attack-minded players, are their substitutes. But right like speed, he's a plucky little character and he won't want to come out of it. Mike Newell. Price making a run beyond him. Newell biding his time and picking out Scott Sellers. Hungry for the ball. Alan Wright's gone forward. Forward ball by Sellers, a little bit too strong for Speedy. David Speedy will let, uh, let uh, Sellers know about it, you can be sure. But he just sold Walsh there with a little trick for that penalty. He got goal side of him and he knew what he was doing. He won the penalty quite literally. doing well, although it's fallen here for Steve Thompson. He's a good striker, the ball, Steve Thompson. He scored over 50 goals for Bolton. I know Phil Neal always felt that he didn't score enough. He's popped in five so far this season for Leicester, but he should be encouraged to have a go from long range because he hits it well. Yeah, the ball dropped conveniently right into his path there, although it came off Colin Hendry's head. A good shot, but once again from a long way out, and Leicester still can't turn that Blackburn back four around. James, Russell, one back by Sellers, right for Speedy, Thompson's won it for Leicester, James, racing on a forward run, 
Kevin Moran across the cover. What an ally Kevin Moran is. Such a courageous player. All that Wembley experience too. This will, this will be a long throw. James has got a longest throw in the world. It's like a missile. So this will come into Walsh probably at the, at the front post area. Walsh trying to get there. It came off Atkins and it will be a corner. Terrific support for Leicester City inside Wembley Stadium today. They've sold close on 40,000 tickets for this match. And they need that support now, the men in blue. Mike Whitlow will take the corner. The Air Force is forward. James and Walsh are in there. It's towards Ormond White. It found a way through to James. And somehow found its way over the crossbar and away to Blackburn safety. Alan Wright getting the pad on the back. Blackburn were fortunate there, Ormond Roy missed it completely at the, at the near post. But it pitched in there, it could have gone anywhere, and Alan Wright's got it off the line. Another corner. Thompson. This time speedy in front of Ormond Roy. It'll be another corner. Really was a last-ditch clearance that by Alan Wright. Did ever so well to scoop it away. Thompson. Speedy's there again. They shall not pass. There was only ever going to be one winner two there, wasn't it? Grayson. Mills. The centre-backs are still forward, but that's much too long for Steve Walsh. And here comes Mike Newell now with a whole left channel to run into, and Scott Sellers running ahead of him, onside. Muggleton, the goalkeeper, committed, just got there. Great bit of goalkeeping from Muggleton there. He read the situation well and came a long way out of his goal to fly kick it into touch. Any hesitation there, and he could have been in real trouble. Beginning to open up now and become more end to end. Newell. Cowens. Atkins has gone forward again. Price. David Speedy. In towards Chris Price again. Hopkin, hopefully. Mike Newell's waiting. David Speedy waiting too, and Colin Hill got there. Scott Sellers, though. No free kick. Went looking for it. Thompson away for Russell. Leicester have got four in the break. Gary Mills ahead of him. Ormond and right too. This is Ian Ormond This is Gary Mills. Colin Hill has got four from the back now. Here's Hill. Well blocked though by David Mann. And that's the second time in the half that uh, Hill, one of the three central defenders, has got all the way forward and Leicester have got to commit one of those spare defenders. Yes, yeah, quite right. I don't know whether that was as a result of the break and where he found himself or whether that's a deliberate ploy, but he got up there to add weight to the attack, which is what they need to do. But even with two against three, Speedy and Newell have caused problems. If it becomes two against two, the gaps may just open for them to close the game out. Kevin Moran. a little bit too far for Newell who couldn't quite grow enough Leicester City have never won at Wembley four times FA Cup finalists here four times beaten finalists three times during the 60s that scorching goal by Neil Young for Manchester City the last to beat them in 1969 they've waited a long time to return they don't want to go empty-handed Pushing right. Another free kick conceded in a dangerous position. Last thing they wanted to be doing there with Leicester's power in the air, which has been shown on two or three occasions already. James, Walsh, Hill, all on a return ticket from the back. Whitlow with the free kick. Mims has come for it, not got it. Chance for Grayson, deflected and away this time by Colin Hendry. Two goal line clearances in the first ten minutes of this second half, keeping Blackburn in front. First right, that time Hendry. Bobby Mims has come there for the cross, not quite made it, just got a palm to it. He's dropped conveniently there, but there's about five Blackburn players on the line and they've scrambled it clear. It's Tony James who almost turned it in. Right with the corner. Header away that time by Mike Newell, deep in defence. Steve Thompson. Gary Mills. 
testing times for Blackburn. Headed down by Walsh, turned by James, didn't quite come off for him. Alan right away. It's getting a little bit claustrophobic inside that Blackburn penalty area now. Leicester are on a roll. Steve Thompson, Simon Grayson, Kevin Russell. Chance to turn and shoot, charged down typically by Kevin Moran. Back in towards Steve Walsh, it's too long. Blackburn can breathe again and breathe deeply. This is the crucial time now for Leicester to get back in this game and for Blackburn to hang on. The last thing they would want is to concede a goal now and for the jitters to set in. And obviously the earlier Leicester can get back in, the better it will be for them. It's their best spell of the game so far. the second line of defence there when right here sees the ball because he's becoming more and more of a thorn in Blackburn's sides. Yeah, he's got two or three one-on-ones with David May there and he's had trouble containing him. He's quicker, quick, tricky player. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised if the ball finds its way out there as much as possible in the next few minutes. But once again, Leicester have got a free kick in a dangerous position. The big guns are at the back post. Whitlow with a free kick. It's in towards Ormond Roy, he's won it in the air, away by Alan Wright, Gordon Cowns fighting George Courtney to get to the ball. Tommy Wright, taking on Price this time. Sellers deep in defence, brought down was he by James, hacked away by Atkins. It's Wright again. Hung in for Ormond Roy again, Kevin Moran with a terrific clearance. Gary Mills for Leicester. Moran again. Colin Hill. Kevin Moran's playing them on his own at the moment back there. It's Ormond Roy. Wouldn't bounce for Walsh. Knocked away by Chris Price. One back very well indeed though. Thompson. Mays in the way this time. Steve Walsh has got it back for Leicester. It's all Leicester. Tommy Wright. Running at Price who just got a foot on the ball but Wright it was who ran it out and that'll be a goal kick. Leicester have thrown everything into attack to try and get this goal back. Blackburn are defending manfully, but they can't seem to get the ball out of their half. A year's a long time in football. Leicester City went into their final game of last season with their second division survival in the hands of others. West Brom could have sent them down. They survived by two points. Lucky that only two clubs were relegated last time. And then came Brian Little. And what a change it's been for them. But Blackburn have been defiant so far and are dangerous on the break. There's an offside flag against Mike Newell. It will be a free kick to Leicester. <laughs> 1 0 Blackburn lead. Mike Newell's penalty on the stroke of half time. Colin Hill for Leicester City, who dominated this second period. Whitlow. Fall for Hill. Mark Atkins put him under pressure and he shot. And Mark Atkins actually got a deflection on it. It'll be a corner. Both players involved will require treatment. Atkins clutching his left knee. Hill seemingly clutching his head. Ball's been crossed in there, it's just deflected down. Hill's come through with a shot, and he's just caught him underneath the knee there, trying to block the shot. He's actually a Sheffield United player, Colin Hill, he's only on loan to Leicester. They brought him in when Richard Smith was injured a couple of months before the end of the season. But he's an experienced player, he played over 50 games with Arsenal, he's a Northern Ireland international, and he's uh, been a... A tremendous lift for Leicester in the closing weeks of the season. He's done a great job for them. He started to push more and more into midfield in the second half. He's playing in front of the two centre-backs unless they happen to be defending. He's picked up a lot of balls and most important of all, he's helped Leicester sustain the attacks. Every time a Blackburn player heads it out, a Leicester player seems to pick it up because he's pushed it as that extra man. 
Mark Atkins is made of the right stuff. He's clearly in some discomfort there. Mike Pettigrew doing his best to revive him. Mark Geeson doing his best to revive Hill. The drinks are out. I thought that was cricket they did there. They've earned it, all of them. I had the privilege of watching both the games on Saturday and Sunday from the benches down at pitch level, and there's just not a breath of air down at ground level inside Wembley. Stiflingly hot. An hour gone. A corner to Leicester City. Steve Thompson. In towards Tony James. It's awkward again. Shot by right block, turned away by Moran. They're living on their nerves back there, Blackburn. Gary Mills. How much more can they resist? Hendry away. Look at this for a break. It's three on one. It's Speedy, Atkins and Cowens. David Speedy in possession. Oh, and he went for it himself. He was brought down by Mills. And what will George Courtney make of that? Strictly speaking, Speedy was moving away from goal when Mills fouled him. George caught his last game. A referee who's never been far from controversy. Gary Mills, Leicester's player of the season, waits anxiously to see the colour. It's yellow, and I think that's right. Yeah, that's, I think that's quite right. He was moving away from the goal. He wasn't directly through on goal. I think it would have been very harsh if he'd gone off there. It was a horrible tackle, actually. But Mark Atkins was in so much space to speed his left. And I think Speedy was worried that Atkins was running into an offside position. And he went alone in the air. Blackburn free kick. They've soaked up so much Leicester pressure in the first 15 minutes of this second half. It will beat Scott Sellers. And Carl Muggleton watched it carefully all the way. again Tommy Wright Kevin Russell Mike Whitlow the furthest man forward but little Alan Wright's back there covering and covering splendidly This is a time when it becomes a real test of nerve now and who are the real men out there. Leicester season, all 49 games of it is going to come down to the next 20 minutes and obviously Blackburn having been under the pressure of expectation all the year, I hoping they can hang on and maybe get one on the break as well, be frightened to death to make a mistake. There is nothing more tense than these playoff finals. But their box office, there's more than 68,000 people inside Wembley this afternoon. The receipts for the three days of playoff football, over a million pounds. Show business, maybe, but for the men down there in the middle, I think the attraction of them might be a, a little bit lost on one or two of them. They're absolutely brilliant if you come out the winners and you've had a diet at Wembley and everything else, but if, uh, if you're the losing side or in the losing team, there's a tremendous empty, hollow feeling, miles worse than losing a cup final. He's been through it, not here at Wembley, but in the old playoffs with Charlton, who had to win to stay in the first division, and came through in the most dramatic circumstances. And now Kenny Dalglish, who's been through just about everything else in football, is going through this. Those inside the club insist he's remained a relaxed and reassuring figure throughout his seven months of rain and shine at Blackburn. It'll never be open house when uh, he's in charge, but I spent a couple of hours at team headquarters on Saturday evening, and I must say, he was positively radiating calm and quiet confidence. The smile hardly left his face. He's a good one to have on your side when the heat's on. And it's on in every sense this afternoon. Sellers forward. And Speedy and Newell are going to have some lost causes to chase, I suspect, in the last 25 minutes. Looks as if Blackburn have sat back and settled for it there. That was a long, hopeful ball from Sellers. It's a dangerous game to play. Gordon Cowan's trying to reassert Rovers in the game. Kevin Moran. 
driven forward towards David Speedy. It's a beauty. Over the head of Steve Walsh. Speedy went for the early strike. Off balance, couldn't control it. Right once, idea. Once again, he's got on the shoulder of the last defender there, and a long diagonal ball's nearly got him in. With the full back pushed in, there's no covering player there. Scott Sellers taking on James, trying a chip. Doesn't lack for confidence, does he? Or ability. And I think he's played a significant part today, especially in the uh, in the opening 25 minutes. Now I hope that you know. It, he does himself justice in his last 20 minutes. I think a good run there. He's just, just gone over the top with a chip. Oh, now the chips are down. He, uh, he shows his qualities all the way through the 90 minutes. Ormond Roy winning it in the air, inevitably. But Wright and Cowan's tidy up. Blackburn just need a settling period in the game. And Leicester need to make a decision now about whether to leave on that third central defender or whether to bring on David Oldfield or Phil G or both of them as time's running out. If they're going to make a move substitution-wise, uh, they're going to need to do it in the next 20 minutes. Foul by Price on right. I think Brian Little's got no choice really but to take one of the central defenders off now to give the new players the 20 to 25 minutes there is left to make a contribution to the game. Another free kick and the big guns are up at the back post again. Mike Whitlow with the free kick. In goes Ormond Roy. Nobody reached it. you calm me away. Mark Atkins leading another break. Sellers to his left, Speedy to his right. Here goes Scott Sellers now. Leicester have got four men back. Sellers will bide his time for a moment. Too far in front of Atkins. Phil G is ready to come on, and it's going to be Tony James, we understand, one of the three centre-halves who will be replaced. No reflection on his performance, it's simply now what needs for Leicester. Russell with a flick. Warren just beating Roman Roy to it. And you've got to be careful with the back passes when he stretches out a leg to try to intercept. Extensions on those legs, see an Ormond Royd. Here comes the substitution. And Phil G, who lost his place for the playoff semi-finals to Kevin Russell. Part of the Paul Kitson deal with Derby County, which brought in Ormond Roy to Leicester to replace his Tony James. He's done very well, Tony James. He's been out a long part of the season with a broken leg and to come back and play a part towards the end of the campaign and play at Wembley today, it's no reflection on him that he's been substituted, I'm sure it's just tactical. Ormond Roy. Russell trying to get there. First touch for Phil G. Well, we're at the midpoint now in the second half. The second half which has belonged almost totally to Leicester City. Blackman have suffered a little bit. Don Mackay has suffered with them in the past. He is suffering again, Don. Yeah, they, they've lost away a little bit. Leicester have done tremendously in the second half. They started off getting things going. They just haven't got the goal they need to bring them into the game, uh, to bring them back in. The longer it goes on, the stamina's going to tell. Mark Atkins, middle of the park, been fantastic. I mean, he's been all over the place. Just to make the foul there just now, but he's worked great and everything he's put in has been tremendous. And I mean, he may be the one that may suffer most of all. I think that's why Lee Richardson's on the bench as well. But uh, again, Leicester, total good character of the second half. They've come right out and got it really going. Little shirt pull has actually earned Mark Atkins a yellow card, and it might just have been a sign of tiredness. But he's been box to box all afternoon, Atkins. He's been a real bundle of energy. Free kick. Gary Mills in towards Ormond Roy. Hendry got to it. This is Tommy Wright. Oh, he just took on a bit too much and ran it out for the goal kick. He could have easily pulled it back to Mike Whitlock. But Tommy Wright is an individual by nature and that kind of player. Leicester have gone into a 4-4-2 shape now with G and Ormond right up the middle, Tommy Wright on the left and, and uh, Russell on the right. So it's obviously an attempt to keep Blackburn pinned back who seem content to sit on this lead and just play on the break when they get the chance. 
If I was, if I was Brian Little, I'd be thinking about David Oldfield as well. If things didn't happen in the next five minutes, you must play all your cards in a situation like this. And he's got a good ability to run with the ball, and he could make one or two things happen. They have beaten Blackburn twice already this season in the uh, two league games. Most uh, significantly with that calamitous Kevin Russell goal at Ewood Park five weeks ago when the two clubs were travelling in opposite directions. Leicester on the up, Rovers on the slide. But it all evened up in the final weeks of the season and here they are slugging it out now for the last promotion place. And just a penalty dividing them. Kenny Dalglish's transfer dealings have been high profile, high finance transactions. Brian Little's actually been involved in 24 moves this season and he's come out of them showing a profit. No wonder Newcastle United was strongly linked with him. He's just the man for you if you've got debts. Here's Scott Sellers. Offside against Newell. Yeah, to pick up that point, he's done a marvellous job there, Brian. Not only he turned them from a sort of bottom of the table team into a, a playoff contender and a team that's unlucky not to have got promotion outright in some respects, but he's shown a shrewdness and a profit in his transfer dealing, which is an integral part of the, uh, the modern game for a manager. Phil G, looking for Orman Roy. Hendry and Wright were there. But it's some pretty desperate defending now from Blackburn. All Leicester want is a drop of the ball in the penalty area, which is what they've not had so far. The ball hasn't bounced at all for them. In towards Orman Roy, turned away by David May. Thompson back into the path of Grayson with a shot. Never got himself set. Ball was always beneath his feet. Simon Grayson's a typical example of Brian Little's shrewdness. £50,000 from Leeds United, where he was part of a big championship squad and never able to get his opportunity. And now suddenly he's uh, a principal figure in a push for promotion. Colin Hill, sorry, Gary Mills, I should say. Oh, side down by Hendry, got it all wrong. Colin Hendry was Blackburn Rovers' Wembley hero when they were last here. Scored the winner in that uh, full Members' Cup final against Lenny's Charlton in 87. 86 minutes, I think it was, Lenny, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't a particularly inspiring game, that full Members' Cup final. It looked as if it was going to be extra time, and uh, he popped up with a goal with about five minutes to go. But uh, nothing, no disrespect, nothing like this. Yeah, it was a lunge there, he's dived in and uh, he's got booked for it. Pity because he's marshalled that defence brilliantly well today. Him and Moran have been the two key players for Blackburn, in my opinion. Set plays remain the best way of Leicester scoring, I think. Every time they get a free kick or a corner, it looks dangerous with all the height they've got in their team. Although now James has gone off. But uh, all they're lacking is a, is a bounce of the ball or a rub of the green in the penalty area from one of these free kicks or corners, and they could equalise. In general play, Blackburn's defence has been a little bit too well marshalled for them. I don't know if it's by imagination, but Brian Little seems to be greying by the minute. He looks healthy enough. If I was him, I'd get that other substitute on as soon as possible, so that uh, he's got time to make a, a contribution, as I say. Right, here we go with the Leicester set-piece show again. Knocked in by Thompson. Oof. Good header by Walsh. Just got up above David May and it's squirted over the crossbar. Leicester captain trying to lead from the front. Good movement at the back post before the ball's delivered there to lose the markers. He gets across his man, Walsh just can't keep it down and it goes over the bar. Good effort. Free kick is Leicester City's. Everything is Leicester City's at the moment, except for the lead. 1-0, Blackburn Rovers still in front. Steve Thompson. Walsh is in there again. Headed by May and it just dropped for G and he couldn't direct it as he wanted. I think he was surprised to get the chance. Actually, Bobby Mims looking like calmness personified, but the heart's beating under that green jersey, you can be sure of that. Actually, could have, might have had time to let it drop there. He might have let it drop. He's gone, stooped and headed it. There we are. 
My goodness, it's an easy game from up here. It's a rough, tough game down there at the moment. Blackburn have got a free kick. Tension's going to play a big part now. We're 15 minutes away from either a place in the Premier League or another year in the second division or the first division, as they call it, next year. So people are going to be frightened to make a mistake and that or a little stroke of genius somewhere could decide it. Hendry with a free kick. Mike Newell came off Hill, then off Thompson. Cowns has got it back. Colin Hendry. Just dropped behind Sellers and G was a bit more determined. Given away though by Grayson. Alan Wright to Mark Atkins. Mike Newell's made a run, he's got in behind Colin Hill here. Chance for Mike Newell, he's held off the defender. Muggleton got a hand to it and he rode his luck. It's a corner though, he couldn't keep the ball in play. Mike Newell, the former Leicester player, almost in for his second goal there. My goodness me, took a chance, the goalkeeper with his position there, knew he's got it. Look where he is on the edge of the box, anything over the top of him and it's in. He's, his boldness has paid dividends, he's got a hand to it and it's only a corner. Blackburn have had some great opportunities on the break. They've had some very, very tense moments inside their own penalty area. Forward in towards David May. It's turned away by Mike Whitlow. Sellers wants the throw, and Sellers will get the throw. Every last second is so important. Scott Sellers in no big hurry to take the throw. Alan Wright, Gordon Cowens, Kevin Moore. Beautifully played by Cowan. Speedy trying to switch it now for Chris Price. Muggleton's committed again. Chance here for Chris Price. Oh, and he couldn't lift it for Atkins. And Muggleton got away with it again. Here come Leicester on the break with Phil G. Tommy Wright. No good for Thompson. Sellers. Newell's on his way again. Just offside. Not much in it. Just as well. The goalkeeper's taken another chance there with his position or he's been caught a little bit too far out of the goal but he's got away with it again, he's retreated and managed to cut the cross out. If Chris Price could have lifted that, Mark Atkins was in position there at the far post. If 13 more minutes, 1-0 Blackburn Rovers lead. Ormond with a flick, Wright trying to get there, G trying to get there but Wright had already fouled Chris Price. The frustration starting to show. Good defending there, the Blackburn defenders got themselves across the front of the attackers, made sure that they were the right side of the ball. Ball flicked on by Ormond Droid. He's got himself across the front there, May, and then Wright's fouled him. It's been almost a no-win situation for Blackburn and Kenny Dalglish. He won't expect too much credit. The club's got too much credit at the bank for sympathy or rich praise. Mark Atkins breaking clear. Right down the throat of Muggleton with Sellers in space to his left. Leicester being opened up on the break. They're committing so much now to attack. And the second goal would surely win it. Kevin Russell though. Tommy Wright. It's a marvellous match. Wright with a shot. Blocked by Price. Run away from Thompson. Here they come again. Speedy wants it early. He's on his own against three of them. And he's crudely brought down. But Simon Grace is getting excited about David Speedy has been very stupid. It was a definite foul. This will be very interesting to see what George Courtney makes of this. Well, that's Speedy all over. He turned his man, he won the free kick, it was all done. But he just couldn't resist it, could he? What's it to be? That's what it's to be. Same colour as the jersey. Different colour to the blood. Very red-blooded stuff from David Speedy. But Blackburn held their breath there for 15 seconds and it took him to produce that yellow card. Cowens with the free kick. Speedy trying to get involved again. Turned away by Whitlow. Chris Price run off it. Strong play by Steve Thompson. 
Mills has made a run down the centre. Space for G on the right-hand side. Beautifully delivered by Thompson. This is Phil G. Crossed in towards Roman Roy. Russell's there. Great clearance by Andre. You couldn't put a price on Colin Hendry's contribution there. Scott Sellers. Here they come on the break again. Ten more minutes. Alan Wright. Scott Sellers. Almost there. Right again. Charge down for a corner kick. Heels for handball against Colin Hill. Now's the worst time in the world to be a manager sitting on the bench with ten minutes to go and so much to play for. They could be screaming instructions from the side like they are, but at the end of the day, it depends on... Uh, a lot of tired legs and tired minds out there. Leicester have made an unbelievable physical effort this half, but haven't yet, yet to show anything for it. Scott Sellers trying to tease them again. Gordon Cowens. Not the best of balls. It's full G for Leicester. Out of the top flight since 1987. But a club with first grade traditions. Speedy's offside. When you think of Shilton and Lineker and Clark and Banks and Worthington and McClintock, you think of a Premier Division club. Kevin Russell. In towards Ormond Roy. Turned into the path of Phil G. They're racing to get to the far post. Header away though by Alan Wright. G to try again. Charged down by May. Headed away by Price. Newell trying to calm it down but can't. Whitlow though only for Cowens. One back by Newell that time. Atkins with Speedy to his left. Onside. Mark Atkins trying to lend some support. Speedy's won it back. Mike Newell broke the challenge of Hill but not that of Walsh. Eight more minutes and Don Mackay, you've been through all this before, haven't you? Yeah, but the danger is now they're sitting back so far. Leicester really got the game, but they can scrub the net now, and they're really putting the real pressure onto the Blackburn Rovers. They're only hoping to get things on the break. It was noticeable the corner kick. Ormond Roy. Hooked in towards right, hooked away by Cowens. Mike Newell. It's Chris Price with Atkins and Speedy ahead of him. Looking to play Speedy in. Blackburn have settled for this goal now, they're just sitting here making sure they don't get caught on the break themselves. Dangerous game, it only takes a second to score a goal. Gary Mills. Kevin Russell. Taking May on on the outside, he's run out of pitch. His legs just wouldn't take him there. Amazing to think that Stoke City could have bought Kevin Russell in January. Brian Little was prepared to let him go. And yet the rooster, as they call him, a real folk hero amongst the Leicester fans. Pinched a couple of vital goals as a substitute against Blackburn, of course, and against Tranmere. Very, very controversially down at Filber Street. And lifted them right up into the promotion frame. Looks like he's got a touch of cramp there. Wonder if he might use that opportunity to get David Oldfield on for the last five minutes. I hope it is the last five minutes. Just over six to play, in actual fact. Alan Wright. It's a Blackburn throw. It's Scott Sellers. So Cowan short, but Cowan's got it back. Sellers now is suffering. Chris Price. G with the challenge. And here come Leicester again with Gary Mills. He's got right to his right. Great tackle by Kevin Moran. Chris Price. What an inspiration Moran is. Atkins. Newell. Sellers a passenger for the moment. Newell trying to play Atkins in. What a chance for Mark Atkins. Brought down Bozzi. Yes! It's another penalty. Mark Atkins has won it. Last six minutes. And Blackburn Rovers are one kick away from the Premier League. To think that Mark Atkins is the only player on the Blackburn side, or maybe on the top edge, who had the legs to make and the determination to make that run. He's got himself in behind the defence. 
Yeah, looks a penalty. So how's your nerve, Mike Newell? There are five minutes left on the clock. It's Mike Newell for the second time. Oh, beaten onto to the post by Motherton. The drama just never stops. It was a great save by the Leicester keeper. He guessed right and went right. I wonder now if that they're going to be made to pay for that. And that's just going to be one final twist in this saga yet. Well, that is Blackman Rovers all over, I'm afraid. I can't believe that. They just refuse to put us out of our misery. Phil G, on to Kevin Russell. Warren trying to get there, Wright trying to get there. Again, the appeals, nothing doing, says George Courtney. Lee Richardson on for Blackburn. And what a contribution here from the substitute. Oh. Went with his left and caught it with his right, and his left hit nothing. Fresh legs, though. Richardson again, on for Sellers. Run off it though by Tommy Wright. What a great challenge that was from Tommy Wright. Wright trying to play it through, G's offside. Doesn't matter about the back pass, he's offside, doesn't matter. Calm down, calm down at home. He's offside. But what a save by Carl Muggleton to keep Leicester alive. He's guessed right. He's made up his mind which way he's going to go. Not a well-struck penalty. Saved it fairly easily. It's over 25 years since Blackburn Rovers were last in the top division. The team of Mike England and Keith Newton. Ronnie Clayton was still around too. They've been down to the third in the meantime. They pass within sight of promotion. But the Rovers' return has been delayed and delayed. Mike Newell trying to end the delay. Taking on Hill again. Squeeze back, Speedy, Atkins! Muggleton stopped him again! That was an outstanding save. Low to his left, he had to drop down quick. Great save. Another chance to finish it off. I wonder if Leicester will get one more chance. It's a corner kick. No place for faint hearts, that's a certainty. with the corner the tension unbearable in towards Atkins again Steve Walsh trying to turn it back to his goalkeeper has given away another corner I think there's more people outside the penalty area on the halfway line than there is inside it for this corner which is a first but Mark Atkins has been a hero for Blackman today you talk about the big money signings he suffered playoff disappointment both with them and Scunthorpe he's bargained basement stuff but he's been tremendous Header away by Whitlow. Cowan's trying to win it back. Held off by Steve Thompson. Two minutes remaining. This could be Leicester's last chance. Play has been stopped. It's called back for Leicester free kick. Well, it's been a season of many moods. The mood will be relief as much of joy if Blackburn can get through now. The spotlight's shining on them, but it'll shine even brighter if they fail. Here's a chance for Tommy Wright. It wasn't far away, was it? It's the first opportunity they've had where the ball's dropped kindly for them in the box, Leicester. Good chance on the volley. Be disappointed he didn't get it on target. Great knockdown from Ormond Droid. Low from Hendry, off his chest, wouldn't come down for him, but he'll be a little bit disappointed. Free kick to Blackburn. 1958 was their last promotion year, promotion to the top section, that is. Johnny Carey was the manager, Ali McLeod, Roy Vernon, Peter Dobing, the men who set the modern standards at Ewood Park. But they're on the way back. It's Lee Richardson. Trying his luck from long range, hit Colin Hill. Chris Price lifted in, David Speedy's offside. More seconds tick away. The last minute. Mike Newell's penalty on the stroke of half time still separates Blackburn Rovers from Leicester City. 
header by Ormond Roy. Alan Wright. It stayed in for Grayson. Steve Thompson. Steve Walsh now for Leicester. One last chance maybe for them to square it. Flicked on by G, turned away by May. Still Phil G. Running into a cul-de-sac. David May blocking out the light down in the corner. It's a throw-in. Stoppage time. Throw-in by G. Flicked on by Walsh, shot away by Richardson. Back in there by Whitlow. Mark Atkins is there. There was a push and Blackburn Rovers have a free kick. Is it to be another Wembley lap of honour for Kenny Dalglish? A return to the level of competition that he's known throughout his career. A return to Anfield and the other major arenas of football. David Speedy running free. Mike Newell in support, Speedy trying to curl on past Muggleton. We've played a minute now over the 90. Long for Kevin Russell. Came off Hendry. It's turned on by right. Ormond Roy's offside. Offside. They've given it everything, Leicester, just as Derby did in the semi final second leg. But you can't buy hearts, and Blackburn Rovers have got huge reserves of it. They dug in. So far, so good. They've seen Leicester off. <laughs> Nearly two minutes of added time play. Offside against Mike Newell. Blackman fans celebrating, think it's the final whistle. It's anything but. It's another opportunity for Leicester to launch a long ball to the edge of the Blackman penalty area. In towards Russell, Ormond Roy's there, he's got a flick on, it's Steve Walsh, Lee Richardson's back there again. Throw in to Leicester. George Corley looking at his watch again. Leicester throw. Ormond Roy. Mike Newell back defending, everybody back defending. Thompson in towards Walsh, headed by Moore and who else? Gary Mills. The referee looks at the watch again. That's it. Going up, going up, going up. Blackburn Rovers have made it at last. And the great Ewood gamble by Jack Walker on Kenny Dalglish has paid out the Premier Prize. Mike Newell's goal did it. Blackburn promoted to the Premier League. They've gone round the houses to get there. But after more than 25 years, Chess. For Leicester, it's sunken treasure. They've suffered a bit in the last couple of months. The Rovers report supporters have seen it all before, but this is what they've been waiting to see. The party will have started in East Lancashire, and there are 30 odd thousand extra guests on the way. Doug Leach has done it. And Rob McCaffrey with Colin Hendry down on the pitch. Colin, tremendous celebrations. Mind you, they made you work for that. I think we both went for it, but, you know, the chances went, chances came and went. We took your chance, we may have had a couple more, they may have had a couple. What about the David Speedy penalty? Brian Little said it was a dive. The referee seen it as a penalty, he gave it as a penalty. Will this side do well in the Premier League next season? Well, we're there, we'll find it next year. I'm off. I'm to celebrate and uh, quite rightly Mark Atkins going to every Leicester City player to commiserate as I say he's known playoff defeat with Blackburn and Scunthorpe and the Blackburn players know more about this situation than anybody but Don Mackay watching on 
maybe a little bit jealously, but I know delighted for Kenny Dalglish. <laughs> Tears for Carl Muggleton, the Leicester goalkeeper, who stopped the second Mike Neal penalty. But it's Kenny Dalglish's day, and he's with Rob McCaffrey. Kenny Manny, congratulations. I've got to ask you, you viewed the David Speedy penalty. Brian Little said it was a dive. What did you think? Can I hear you, Lord? David, Brian Little said David Speedy dived for the penalty. What was your view? Well, that's, uh, that's Brian Little's opinion. Steve Wall spoke to Megan in the tunnel and asked me if he thought it was a penalty. And I said, well, you're no better than anybody. He said, well, I did touch him. So that's, that's good enough for me. The referee gave us a penalty kick. They may have two goal length clear to the second half. We may have got a couple, another one. But at the end of the day, we've won the match, and that's what it matters. That's the most important thing. I think you've proved a few people wrong again. I've nothing to prove to anybody. What's going to happen now? A summer spree or just a few rounds of golf? It's going to be a hell of a party going up the M6 anyway. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Well, Kevin Moran, the Blackburn Rovers captain in their traditional famous shirts, goes up for the ultimate accolade here at Wembley this afternoon the knowledge that they will be playing in the Premier League next season. There's Kevin with Jack Walker, Blackburn's major shareholder who's pumped millions in. There's the final scene at Wembley. Blackburn Rovers are promoted.